The new book is called Digital Body Language, and I'm really excited to have the author, Erica Dewan, with us today. Erica, how do you define digital body language? Digital body language are the cues and signals we send in our digital communication that make up the subtext of our messages. Everything from the punctuation we use to our email response times to our virtual video call backgrounds to how we greet and sign off a message make or break how others read our message and often showcase signals even if we don't intend to send them. I keep hearing the advice, oh, just turn off your camera. If you're feeling video conference overload, just turn off your camera and you can listen in, you can speak when you need to. But I often feel like the person with their camera off like is probably, I, it sends a message, right? That you're, you might be multitasking or doing something more important. And so what's your advice on that? We kind of went from the office meeting culture of being in the office and thought that we could adapt all of it and put it on Zoom or Microsoft Teams or whatever our video call tool is that we're using in our organizations. My, my general rule of thumb here is that first and foremost, we need to have less meetings. We need to have shorter meetings and we need to have better meetings. And if we start there instead of just the pain of video call and when to turn off and on our video, we will actually solve a much larger issue. One of the things that my research found was that oftentimes, especially in video calls, we can create a lot of groupthink instead of true engagement. One of my clients has a process now where before all of her video call meetings, she always sends an agenda within 48 hours before the meeting. This not only allows everyone to be ready, she includes questions that she wants everyone to share. And this helps her introverts, especially who are already struggling with airtime years before in the office that now actually have time to process and think before the meeting. Then during the meeting, she uses the chat tool and she says, I like everyone to share their responses in the chat. And then I'm going to call on the people with the most diverse or different perspectives. This avoids groupthink. It avoids just the people that are always loudest or ready on video to speak versus those that are not on video. It avoids and removes some of that bias we have on who's on video and who's not and it ensures that everyone is engaged. Another thing that I even recommend is cold calling. Like in many ways, we have to think of ourselves as hosts on video calls, not as office meeting hosts, but as TV show hosts. We have to ask people and cue them to speak instead of just have an open floor. If we say who wants to share, we'll often just hear from extroverts or the most senior leaders. And so if we start to actually think about our digital body language in video meetings, if we think about and start our meetings with, here's what I want to achieve. Here's how I'll engage all of you thoughtfully in this. And it's not about video or not. It's through practical nuances and creativity in our video meetings. And if we all stay present in this meeting, I'll end the meeting 10 minutes early. That will quickly get everyone's attention, avoid rampant multitasking. And sometimes people will be excited to come on video. So again, my general rule of thumb here is let's have better meetings. Let's connect more thoughtfully. Let's use this moment to not adapt to a world where we already had bad meetings and emails pre-pandemic, but instead ask ourselves how we will make it better. Well, I love cold calling, first of all, because it does avoid that awkward silence of like, hey, does anyone have a thought about this? And you have to let people know, and then they're on their toes and usually coming in on video. Sometimes I'll say, I'm going to call on people at random. I'm probably going to start with those that are off video in the spirit of making sure we don't ignore you in the conversation. And it, it's actually an effective way to engage everyone. What's a tip that you feel is counterintuitive or maybe challenging for people to embrace that's in the book, Digital Body Language? Less haste equals more speed especially with the pressure of digital communications. We often feel like we have to be the fastest to respond, the quickest to jump in, and that's the only way we will get heard, get credit, get respected. But it's also creating a lot of mishaps, a lot of misunderstanding, a lot of teams where we may unintentionally or subconsciously be rewarding the fastest one-off view versus teams actually taking the time to strategize, to think and then to respond. And so whether that means in your next video call saying, I'm going to give everyone a quiet three to four minutes to write down their ideas in their remote desk. And then I want you to share it on a virtual whiteboard. No one's speaking, awkward silence, but it actually creates more collective innovation. 
Uh, or instead of making sure that you're not rewarding the quickest team member to send an email, uh, and research shows if you have three people that respond with a yes, it's much harder for the fourth person to say, no, I disagree by email and here's why. Say, I'd like everyone to send me their ideas on Friday and say it's Monday. It forces people to think for four days and you'll be surprised at how much better the emails are because people have had to adapt them versus just trying to shoot them off. So general rule, less haste equals more speed. Less haste equals more speed. I'm happy to have the book Digital Body Language in analog format because that's how I like to read books. Um, it was a really fun read and uh, thanks for being with us today. Thanks so much, Scott.